one. If I Had Your Face by Francis Cha, I'm doing a simple and quick book review. This one comes out today, the day, I'm hoping to post this on the day that the book launches, which is uh, April 21st, 2020. Uh, if you're looking for a book to pick up on Kindle or something, but I did, or if you can check this out from your library. Uh, this book though, I do love the book cover. I like to, I don't know what texture this cover is, but I like to touch this cover a lot. I love the color of pink. I think the girl in it is beautiful. Um, I do like this cover a lot. I will be passing this book on for somebody else to read, so I don't know if I'll get it back or not. But this is a, d a debut novel. I think the author did an excellent job for being a debut novel. I remember when I like introduced this book, I think I got things mixed up reading them on the back and saying things and trying to set up some because there is a lot going on in this bag, <laughs> in this book. But this book is quintessentially a piece about soul um, nowadays. And there's a lot of things that kind of go on in soul that are completely different than here in the US um, or in Western European countries. Um, their statistics are different about stuff going on there. So basically, one of the big things is cosmetics. Um, it's like something like there they see it as beauty isn't something to envy, beauty is something you work hard for and you attain it. So one in three women in their 20s go under the knife, I believe in the current day soul, um, or that's kind of the statistic that's out there right now. <laughs> uh, so cosmetic surgery is a huge portion of this book. Um, also, as well as K-pop, uh, it's gigantic there and a huge phenomenon, and these girls are super obsessed, so that's a huge part of this book as well. Also, girls not being married, uh, people not having children, that is a huge part of this book as well, just kind of the whole demographics being changed, as well as a lot of people being very highly educated in the city. Uh, the one thing it doesn't touch on, I would say, is I, when I was reading all about soul and everything, is that there are very high suicide rates there, and that's not something that's touched on in this book. This book is not a typical novel, which that's what I was prepared for. It was a, the author's first debut novel. I first thought of this when I was reading it. I was like, this is like an extended expose from the newspaper, or it's like an extended <laughs> newspaper reading. It is definitely not a typical novel with a plot line and a lot of characterization. This is a like slice of life book, I would suggest more, uh, because you're spending so much time with all these different girls, you don't get to know each girl very well, um, and you're not knowing like their full rounded history of everything. You're just, it is what it is. It's like a slice of life book. Um, and so yeah, you're following all these different girls with all these different uh, things that are going on in their life. So one girl uh, wants to have a baby really bad, but they don't have the money to have the baby. She's struggling being married and having like these stereotypes of what a young woman being married should have. Um, and she's had like multiple miscarriages. So there's a lot of pressure on her. She's a very shy person. She does like have a job. But then there's another girl who works in a salon room and she's said to be beautiful. She's had a ton of cosmetic surgery done. And there's a lot of things messing around with her and she does get very jealous of a guy who ends up getting engaged. Um, the salon rooms are also, I think I forgot to mention them earlier, is a huge part of the soul society right now too. It's normal for men who are even married to go hang out every single night in the salon rooms till midnight. Um, some of them are lower end, some of them are super high end. This girl works at a very high end one basically where people blow a lot of money. Um, on prostitution. So one girl works in the salon room and it's like a highly coveted job because they make so much money and the guys give them like designer presents and give them a lot of money um, and they make a lot of money there. And then there's another girl who wants to be in the salon room so she's one of the girls like basically they accrue a lot of debt a lot because even the girl that's in it already and has had all this cosmetic surgery she's accruing debt. It's, there's like a constant way um, having to have plastic surgery all the time and having things kept up all the time. Um, they just occur a lot of debt. So there's another girl who really wants to do that, who lives with a girl who is deaf. The deaf girl is a hairstylist. Um, and she's just come, they both have come from like the country and kind of worked their way up and she's a hairstylist. 
and she's obsessed. She's the girl that's obsessed with the K-pop and like her whole life outside of being a stylist is just this obsession with this K-pop star and following her around and getting super mad and passionate when he decides to date girls. Um, and then, yeah, her friend wants this cosmetic surgery, so gets to know this other girl, wants to know where she got hers done, basically to go in debt so one day she can work in a room salon as well. Yeah, and then there's one other girl who is a beautiful artist who like went and lived in America, lived in some other places in her life. Um, and she's dating like this really wealthy guy who is not that great to her basically. <laughs> and he basically gets, he just does whatever he wants because he's wealthy kind of moment. So <laughs> there's a lot of complications going on in the book as including like a lot of things that are actually going on in Seoul right now. And either they they're talked about a lot there either whether you think they're problematic or not they're talked about a lot so you're not getting to know these girls these girls really aren't intertwined through a whole lot of the book uh, there is this like leap off thing at the end where she kind of twines them in but it falls flat on its face for me because it i don't know if it necessarily needed to be too round because this was just it wasn't a normal novel read i i got that once i got into it um a lot of the names too just because I'm not used to their names and everything and I wasn't super tied into them I didn't know who they were through most of the book like when it got into a chapter because it says their name right at the top of the chapter I just have to start reading and then I recognize the story and I'm like okay this is that girl I didn't really know them by their names if that makes sense uh, as horrible as that is or sometimes I have to go to the back of the book and be like okay which one was this um but yeah you just kind of hear little snippets and it's not even like a full storyline from each girl. It's just like these little snippets of their life of like, oh, here I was at work. Here I was eating a lollipop. I don't know. It was just, it was, it was a completely different type of book. And I don't think I was generally prepared for that. <laughs> um, cause I, I wish something along those lines would have been written on the back, not just the descriptions of all the girls, but telling you that this isn't like, it's not a romance novel. It's not, yeah, I don't, I don't know. You kind of had to discover that on your own because I kept waiting for the book or the plot to get somewhere. And then I realized, okay, no, there is, there is no plot. Uh, there is no huge character development arc in here. Um, the characters go through a little something, some of them, but it's not, it's not plot driven. It's not developed well in the end because the ending is very short and cut off, I feel like. I think I would enjoy this book though if she does go on with it ties it more together, has a more plot driven book, or even if she keeps it kind of the slice of life feel. Uh, so the writing jumps around from place to place. So it reminded me of like, it keeps you at a distance from the characters of you getting too wrapped up in the characters. It definitely keeps these characters at a distance and you don't care that much what happens to them in a way, which is harsh to say. Um, I guess I keep trying to explain what this is. I feel like it's a collection of short stories. I guess that would be the best description. A slice of ice piece and a collection of short stories all bunched together. <laughs> uh, that's the best way to describe it. But yeah, it does have some really cool things going on for it. It's a beautiful cover and it's something I have definitely not read before and it's definitely relevant and modern to Seoul right now. And if the author goes on with it, I would, I would definitely read it because her writing was very pleasant and very nice to read. So yeah it launches today. Tell me if you're interested or if you end up liking it, tell me about it and I will see you guys in the next one. See you guys next time. Bye!